Welcome to Mission to Inspire, where we share life experiences in our careers, personal lives, society, culture, religion, finance, family, and much more. Meet your host, Shola Ajabadi, as she takes you on a ride to fuel your inspiration. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola, and I'm your host on Mission to Inspire today. We've got two lovely guests all the way from United States of America and they are here to talk about or discuss how to create a graphic novel with a social message so meet Tim Blessed and Michael Lazeria you're welcome onto the show <laughs> peace peace thank yeah you. peace love and justice thank you so much <laughs> for having us my name is Tim Blessed I am the hip-hop artist turned author of of planeta blue this graphic novel uh that uh we're so excited to introduce to the world because as you mentioned it has a strong social message but also in the spirit of all comics you know there's there's some superpowers there's some talking animals there's some great heroes and sheroes in it and you know just ex excited to be here and i'll let Mike introduce himself too. Sure. Um, uh, how do I follow that introduction? Uh, I'm Mike Lariccia. I am an, the artist uh, and designer of the book. I'm uh, a comic book artist, an illustrator, animator, graphic designer, a dad, a little bit of a musician, <laughs> not as much as Tim, uh, but I've been lucky to be able to work on all kinds of things in my creative career, uh, including children's book, tabletop games, uh, animated commercials, uh, working for a lot of nonprofits and things like that. Uh, and recently uh, working for the uh, parent guardian organization at my kid's school, <laughs> which is uh -huh. taking up a lot of my time. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I do a lot of all kinds of things. I'm just, and I'm really thankful to be on the show and I'm always thankful that I've uh, been able to work with Tim on this amazing book. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming on our show today. Both of you have got a lot in common. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we do. It's so interesting. Um, That's actually how we met is because a friend of mine and Mike's neighbor um, introduced us. Um, and we live in the same town. Uh, and, you know, the, she was just like, hey, there's this amazing artist I think you should meet because she knew that I was working on this book. And, you know, after looking at Mike's uh, amazing, impressive website, I was like, yes, I think this guy is the right guy to uh, or has, you know, the abilities, the the artistic, uh, you know, beauty, beauty and flow and line. All of that was important. And then we met. And, you know, what was great was this synergy around, you know, being parents, uh, being um, someone who. Uh, is into like hip hop and music. Um, and we both went to U UMass Amherst um, in, in Massachusetts. Um, and so all of that um, made it so it was very easy to work with Mike. Um, um, as a musician, I'd worked with band members and I always prided myself in trying to find not only talented people, but just good people, people that you could vibe with, people that have the same pr principles and um, really are looking at, at making the world a better place, which is really important for me. You know, it's, this isn't about just making money, never been about just making money. Um, although we make a living doing this thing, it's really about adding to the culture, right? Whether it's hip hop culture, whether it's the comic book culture slash graphic novel culture, you know, just art, it's sharing art, sharing a message of peace, love and justice. That that to me has always been kind of where I'm dri driven to. And Michael shared a, a lot of that, if not all of those uh, those uh, elements. And so that was it was really cool uh, to build with him on this project. I, I had to um, what's really interesting when someone shares with you their art in general. So when, when Tim shared with me the, um, the manuscript for the book, yeah. you know, it, that process in itself is, is really telling of what, how, who a person is. Mm -hmm. And so it's very clear based on the values you see in the storytelling and sort of the details and sort of the decisions made 
that, you know, I mean, I could tell like, this is someone that's on the same page as me, no pun intended, <laughs> but, um, but in, so even that first meeting, we both remember just being like, yeah, like we, we totally like the same stuff or, you know, we feel the same way about larger concepts in the world and stuff like that. So, um, so it was really serendipitous that we even got uh, connected in that capacity. So um, it's an easy, it's an easy work relationship uh, and a great friendship. So Okay, great. So we're gonna go into this or that question and I'll see. Yeah. I'll see how you guys will answer this question now. You it has to be the same because you're seeing <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> okay, so the first question. Rap or rock? Rap. Rap. Rap all day. Yeah. Rap all day. Okay. I mean, these are pretty finite answers. There's not there's no middle ground here. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you gotta be swayed one way or the other, it's you know, all right. I, I two... am hip hop, so yeah, rap all day. Rap, rap all day. Okay. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Spider Man is Spider Man lives there, and now Spider Man became black. Oh, forget oh, about it. Oh, okay. Like, let's go. Let's go, but yeah, okay. Spider Man, okay, Wolverine, then. Hulk. Okay. Yeah. Netflix or oh, Hulu? Do you like next Netflix? I'm, I'm going. I'm going to I'm going to say Netflix. Netflix because I've been watching a lot of Netflix stuff lately. <laughs> but but I don't have a real allegiance, Shola. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. They just they have a lot of original programming that I, I really like, especially the animation stuff seems to be really cool that's coming out of Netflix. So I love it. <laughs> okay, drawing or writing? Drawing. I got one drawing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm a writer, I'm all, I'm also uh, I also draw, but you know, not as good as Mike, but um, but I draw and that's how I get a lot of my ideas down. I gotta put them down on on paper. And so yeah, drawing. I'll go drawing any okay. day. I'll, I'll take that because you both are into graphics anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, this question you're going to answer together. Okay. You have to answer this one together. So, now, <laughs> pizza or burger? One, two, three. <laughs> burger. Oh, <laughs> Mike, you missed. Oh, that was tough. Pizza? Yeah. <laughs> the Italian guy. Uh, yeah, I know. had to go with pizza. Okay. I, you know, I thought about it for a second because I don't eat a lot of burgers, but I'll eat a lot of pizza. <laughs> so I'm going with pizza. Okay, what did you say, Sam? I didn't hear you. I said burgers, man. I'm going to go burgers. I'm going burgers with it. You think you know oh, something. So you, you differ in that. Okay. We right. do differ in that. That's the first one. Okay. You can put a burger on a pizza. Too. Okay. <laughs> you can't do the other way around. Okay, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Ah, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Rings. Yeah. Okay, great. Lord of the Rings. I like Harry Potter. <laughs> go uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, this last the, one. Last one. All right. Last one. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Yikes. Oh, we're going to differ on this, Mike. No, no, I'm going to go Star Trek. I'm going to go Star. Well, look, I got, I got the, got, you know, I got the yeah, prize behind you. me. Yeah, and if and I always say we know there's this there's this conversation that happens in 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 uh, social justice work. It's like, hey, if we win, the future looks like Star Trek. Right, right. I've heard Ooh. that. <laughs> it looks like Star Wars. You know what I mean? And we gotta <laughs> fight the Empire, which we're doing right now. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so I feel we we know you a little bit better now. <laughs> We know where you guys differ a little bit. And I know. You guys <laughs> unite a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the topic that we'll be discussing today is how to create a graphic novel with a social message. Um, so what inspired you guys to create Planet Blue? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. I'm glad you asked that question because it started with just storytelling to my children, uh, just telling the bedtime stories. Um, you know, as as they grew older, you know, the the just funny, quirky, um, you know, kid stories became a little a little bit different, and um, the story kind of stuck with me even after after the nighttime, where I found myself 
talking about it um, as an artist, um, a musician, you you can you can tell when something is landing with the audience, right? And so uh, my children really were excited by the story of Planeta Blue, which was just these ideas. And when I would kind of talk to them about it, like, you know, I'm thinking about actually writing this down, like, who do you think should be in the council? They also were exci excited. And so for me, it was, you know, clear that a lot of the, the characters had to be of color, had to be black uh, characters, because especially when I started writing the story, which goes, you know, uh, plus five years, five years ago, plus um, that there wasn't enough representation or, or young people that uh, are superheroes that look like myself. So you got to think pre-Black Panther movie, pre-Moana even, you know, uh, Disney, that Disney movie, um, all these things made it. So I was like, man, I want my kids to see themselves in these characters, in these heroes, in these sheroes. Um, and at that time, there really wasn't a lot of, you know, black male leads. And so uh, my wife is Latina, she's, she's Boricua. And, you know, I had heard the story about Grito de Laris, which was the only time Puerto Rico, who's a United States colony, you know, people call it territory, but it's a colony. Um, how the first time that you know they were they were free, and that stuck with me, and that would that became the name of our lead uh, character. Um, and and you know, and then we have Tume, who's Cape Verdean like myself. I, I'm from West Africa. I was, I was born in Guinea Bissau. Uh, grew up to Cape Verdean parents in the United States. We immigrated when I was three years old. And so it was important for my sons to see that character. And then also uh, as a youth advocate and a youth worker, um, I knew a lot of young people who were named Angel, but they were never angels. <laughs> uh, they, were, they were, you know, kind hearted people, but they always had like a mischievous kind of edge to them. And so, you know, I really knew these characters, in, in, including... Tyler, who was, uh, the, you know, the white kid transplant from Indiana, uh, which was the birthplace of the KKK. Um, and so we, I remember having these conversations with my friend in high school, who's a white kid and, you know, really talking about these issues because they were, they were ever present, even though we are, we are friends, we, you know, we, we would share our dreams and also what we hoped for the world to be like. And so I thought it was really important to have these characters at the core of the story and, like I tell people in my music as, as a conscious hip hop artist, it's I cannot make music that just is just pop and, and fluff. Right. Um, I, I, even if I try to, you know, what I mean, even if they said, hey, you know, we'll give you a million dollars. I might try. I don't think I can. You know, for me, hip hop has to have a message. It has to be uplifting. It has to be empowering. And so this story, as I was telling it, even though it's it's a lot of action, even though it deals with, you know, animals talking in fiction and fantasy, there is some realism there, especially around environmental justice, especially around animal justice, racial justice, because this is the world we, we live in. And so I wanted to bring in these magical elements, these super fantastic Afrofuturistic elements in this reality base. Um, and, and I think that... Uh, to me is is what inspired me from jump is to have something that had all these elements in it uh yeah so that was that was oh, it that was the wow. driving seed <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting that's interesting um i'm sure a lot of um kids from our background for example would really be interested in those in that book so i'm interested myself i like to see when it's out it's out on tuesday the 21st isn't it Mm -hmm. Yes, November 21st, available everywhere. So you mm -hmm. can buy it wherever you buy your comic books, wherever, you know, if you shop online, you know, at Amazon or Target or Walmart or Barnes and Noble, like everywhere, which we're excited about because we have this iconic uh, distributor and publisher, Dark Horse Comics, who's uh, backing us up and presenting this. So we're excited about that. Wow. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well, go well done, guys. So. Thank you. <laughs> Going from that, your book is about tackling environmental and social issues. Why did you go into that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, as a poet, I, you know, I take it a responsibility to 
say what's happening, like what's happening now, right, in, in my community is always very important. And I grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts, which dealt with uh, whaling. So that was, it was the richest city in the world at a time because that's where they found oil first, right? Uh, before they found it on the ground, they found it in Wales. And so um, it was really sad that, you know, this amazing animal, uh, the sperm whale had to be hunted and uh, taken of its of its life force. Uh, 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 honestly, it's, it's, it's blubber melted down to make oil, kerosene um, and such. And so it's a, a, a form of kerosene for lamps and such that oil. And so it's, um, it was always at the core. That's where my family immigrated to is New Bedford, Massachusetts. And so um, as I was growing up, going to the beach and knowing that like, hey, you can't swim over here because it's polluted, because there were these factories that were dumping all the toxins into the bay and until they cleaned it up. Um, that was an issue. The fact that people um, died because of the um, these uh, brown brown fields that that exist in, in New Bedford toxic waste that they that they put houses on that they put schools on all these things were coming up as I was coming up and then like most people around 2007 ish was when I became aware of the inconvenient truth right that's become so political mm -hmm. or just the reality that hey we are facing with a, a climate crisis um and the way that we are currently, um, consuming the way that we're farming, the way that we are overfishing, all these things that humans are impacting our environment is um, something that's been around for, for ages, but now seem to be coming to a head. And so when I got hip to this awareness, I was like, any art that I put out has to have an aspect of that. It just, it just feels like I would be doing uh, the reader the you know the the people who wants to get entertained a disservice because th this is our reality and so I want to always put things in a reality but also give a message of hope you know because when you look at some of these situations it you it's it seems pretty dire you know but I look at my history I look at how African people have been enslaved in this country and around the world I look at how we su we survived that my my family survived co colonialization like we got our independence from the Portuguese who are op oppressors like we have that blood in us too you know and so like how do you balance those how do you live past you know some of this reality that you know we've been victimized but now we're we're not only victims we're survivors and so how do we survive in the in the in the future to come and so that message had to be included in and in, in, for me anyway in at least in this debut message um and this debut story you know we could have gone with superheroes with suits we could have talked about aliens and all this other stuff which is all exciting things but for me it's really exciting that to defend mother earth, <laughs> you know, to, to really tap into what would the animals, if we could talk to animals, what would they say um, is really a, an idea that really captivated me. And I got to say like most artists, like this idea, once I tapped in, once I locked in, it really wrote it, wrote itself. You know, obviously I, I put in my, my input, but I felt like it's a story that needed to be told. Um, and I feel good being, being part of a messenger for, for the trees, for the breeze, for the wind, for the seas, for the ocean. You know, that's what I feel like. And so, hey, here we go. Let's do it. Let's get it. You know, but, but you know, it's interesting though, because you're you are making us aware of our environment and how to, you know, keep Mother Nature clean the way it should be mm -hmm. by telling a story. Yeah. This is really good. It's not what we've been hearing is on the news, okay, environmental awareness, this, that, that, that. But now it's in a story. <laughs> yeah. We really need to be subtle. We're reading it and we're, it's, mm -hmm. you know, we're digesting it. And we might then start practicing it because we can see the effect and the benefits in that story. So it's Yeah. Really and in no way, I want to say in no way is it preachy, you know, because at, at the heart of it is... It's just the story, right? And here's just the setting. It's a it's a setting that's like, oh my goodness, what are we doing to our world? And the reality that some of these young people weren't even aware of, like many of us, right? Like we don't know what we don't know oftentimes, you know. But once we know, 
I feel like you have a responsibility, you know, um, even a line, you know, I always say this about all the great rappers or all the great artists that are out there. Like, I, I feel like you have a responsibility even to say one thing, even a, one line, <laughs> you know what I mean? In, in this, in the story, you know, and, I, and it's interesting. And as a quick side note, you know, I was even listening to Michael Jackson, right. And he had that song called why, you know, why tell him that it's human nature. Why, why do we do it that way? You know? And so even like, you know, these subtle things that seem like pop music, you can always put something in there just to speak on a, div a, a, a different level. And I think all the great artists, which is what we're trying to be, you know, the great authors, the great filmmakers, they always go a, a layer deeper, you know, when you think of the matrix, right? It's not just an action movie, right? It, it goes it goes layers deeper. And, and the key is to not beat people over the head, right? With the message, it's like, hey, here's the entertainment, here's the, the action, here's the, you know, these, um, the love and the compassion, um, but also know that it's grounded in, in these real elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Now, how did you collaborate on this story, Mike? How did you collaborate? <laughs> um, well, like Tim was saying, so he found me through a mutual acquaintance. It was my neighbor and his friend. So his friend was living right next to me. And, you know, I think people always kind of know like, oh, I, I have a friend who is an artist, that kind of thing. So so uh, my neighbor was like, hey, um, I have this friend who wrote a book. He'd like to, to connect with you. And, you know, both of us were kind of resistant to being like, okay, well, I'll just do it because this is my neighbor and vice versa, you know, because because, you know, you feel like everybody's got a book. Everybody's everybody's in our, you know, everybody kind of says there's something. So um, when we met, he came over to the house and he, I, we had exchanged emails, but I, like we hit it off like immediately. And and to sort of piggyback on the previous questions is that as an artist, um, doing work with purpose is what really inspires me to just keep creating. You know, it's, you know, I feel like art, can be used to distract people or to inspire them yeah you know, and enlighten right so um this is an instance where this is a, a piece of art where you know i'm going to be you know it was a long book it's this was not a short project so thinking about something i'm gonna you know i'm like well this is gonna take me a while and this was during covid too you gotta understand we it was right before the um pandemic really hit so uh, at that time i didn't know i was going to be home all day with my kids <laughs> every day. And so, you know, when you think about, do I want to take on something this big, it's got to be something that you really believe in, something that you think has, um, you know, it's going to reach people and it's, and it's going to stay with people. And so it was clear from reading it that that's what was going on. And there was real content here and that at the forefront, Tim really believed in this project. Like I could tell this wasn't something he was going to lose energy on because that's another thing too you get worried about. I've worked with people where they have these huge projects and it's just like, I'm done, you know, I'm ready to, to move on. This is taking up too much of my life. I wasn't prepared for the other end of this project and like actually getting it out into the world. So um, so all those things factor into it. And again, it, this was something that I believed in just based on the work itself, meeting Tim. And, you know, you gamble a little bit too, you know, because it's such a, a, a drawn out project. You don't know where things are going to be at the end of it. Um, and so I was willing to do that. And um, it, it just kept continuing to be a good experience. And wh what we did was before this was published, the, the book that's coming out on Tuesday, mm -hmm. we did a crowdfunded version of this uh, oh. a couple of years back. And, th and that was what really sort of um, helped us get to the next step for a publisher showing, hey, we, we have an audience for this. We're able to bring this to completion and follow through with everything. And um, the whole experience has been really fulfilling and enriching. And and uh, I've been still enjoying the whole process. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the challenges, the benefits, can you talk us through that? Yeah. Oh, man, there's, there's, there's so many. I think... Uh, it, most importantly, it's become it's become cliche, which is good because it's in our consciousness, this idea that it's a journey, right? Life is a journey, um, not a destination. And so uh, being that this is my first time putting out a book, but having done 
you know, six albums in the past that you could find on, you know, uh, and any, any streaming, Apple Music, Spotify. Um, when I was younger, you know, the challenge was I wanted to get on stage, right? Like stage was where like the magic happened for me, right? It was cool also getting to, you know, the recording booth and recording in the studio, but all those process to get there was very um, painful. <laughs> Let me say it that way, because, you know, who wants to promote your show? Who wants to, um, you know, figure out what you're going to wear, right? Um, like, you know, I just want to have the the, the clothes out. Who wants to actually write the lyrics? Like, writing the lyrics is fun, but to actually, like, you know, come up with the concept. All that stuff um, takes time. And so when you think of, like, just writing this book, um, first of all, um, committing to it was, was a lot, you know, just to say, like, hey, I'm going to write this. Um, and, but I'm also going to finish it, but not only am I going to finish it, which is, which is a lot of artists get in, in, is a challenge is you finish it, but now you have to put it out there to the world because, um, I know too many people who their whole book, their whole album is just in their computer and it just lives there or just a few people hear it, um, or see it. And so having that strategy to put it out there is challenging. As Mike mentioned, we did a whole crowdfunding piece and, you know, just some words of wisdom, like set aside that time to prepare. Um, I know that if we had just launched a uh, a campaign, um, <laughs> you know, just like, hey, I think I'm going to launch a campaign and see if people are going to, you know, support it. it. It doesn't work like that. You really have to reach out to folks, make sure your family got your back, your friends got your back. Um, people, that you know will have your back. They need to be informed, right? No one is in your head knowing what's happening. And so communication is so key. That networking is so key. Um, and then believe in in, in funding it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, although I had investors, I took out a loan. I took a, lot, a loan for this. I invested my own money um, into it uh, because because we have to always support the artists. Like Mike gave me a, a great price. However, he's he's valuable, like he's quality work, right? So you you have to pay the man quality money, right? And and so all that is is to say that you have to believe in this thing wholeheartedly because if you don't believe in it, who is? Because the challenge is gonna come. You know what I mean? Like, it's gonna be like, oh, like oh, I gotta I gotta go to this comic con, and how am I gonna get there? Am I gonna you know rent the hotel, and I gotta get up early, and all these things that. If if your why why am I doing this isn't right, then you're gonna you're gonna really struggle more, or you're gonna feel like oh why am I doing why did I th think I should do this book? Well, I know why I should do this book. I I know exactly why, and I'm happy. So the journey, all those challenges, even when I caught COVID, as Mike mentioned, we we were in the process of, of doing this and we had a, a deadline, right? We had talked to the, to the folks, we reached our goal, right? We successfully hit our goal. And now we're like, we got to put out this book for folks. And then I caught COVID and this is pre, you know, the vaccine, right? So this is like when like, you know, you think like, you know, and, and, and a lot of people did get really hurt. Luckily it, it wasn't as bad for me, but it was enough where it knocked me out for like two weeks. Right. And so that was, that was a challenge. And then, uh, the the pipeline, the the you know the actually trying to get the book. So we knew we had done it ahead of time. Mike finished the book. We we reviewed it. Had it, had an editor go through it. It was all set. We send it out to get printed, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna have it on this day." And then that deadline became like two weeks. Two weeks became the supply a chain. Is that what they said? Like was, that's what we I couldn't mean, yeah. get the it off of freight in California. <laughs> Yeah, it was so it's so challenging. And what are you gonna do? All you gotta do is communicate with folks and let them know this is what's happening. And luckily, we all were going through it, right? We all were going through the same challenges, whether we are just trying to buy, you know, the next PS5 or whatever it is. But for us, we're trying to get these books. And so we work through it though. I think that's what's important. And you know, you get this prize at the end, right? You get this like amazing book that. Mm, smells so good. You know what I'm can, we it's like, can we see the book? Yes. Yeah. Here's check it out, y'all. <laughs> oh, brand spanking wow. new book. Wow. It, it's it. very colorful. And I love the color. Blue, green, 
Oh my God. Yeah, it's a pretty, it, it's a very vibrant um, color color uh, scheme here. Yeah. But if I could add too about challenges though, it's, you know, depending on where you are in your career, the challenges are going to be different. And I know for this particular project, like for me, the challenge to finish it, it was, it was there, but I mean, I knew I could do it. The hardest thing for me, I, and maybe for you, Tim, is just like this part portion of it is like, well, we have the um the chance now to distribute this like internationally how do we get the word out to people how do we because we we believe in it we know the people who bought it love it mm -hmm. so like the challenge is like you you could literally be doing something every minute of the day to to promote this you know and you have to figure out well i have to budget my time i have to prioritize what's important but I also have that sort of stress of like, I could be doing more, I could be doing more, you know? And we're also new at, at, at this level of promotion. And um, so that, I think for most people, that's a huge challenge because it's just like buying a house. Like it's, the first time you do it, you just, you're kind of winging it in the beginning and you're making mistakes or you're you're asking for advice, you're, you're troubleshooting, you're throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And, and there's this, you know, we we want this to continue on so there's you know there's that stress of like we really got to do everything we can to promote and get the word out about it um and so that to me that's the that's the biggest challenge right now because i feel good about everything else you know it's just about it's about is, what's the what is like the trick you know because a lot of people say you know it's really there's a lot of luck involved too where you got you get it in the right place the right person sees it or or something like that and so you're always sort of thinking and keeping your eyes open for opportunities and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's hard to relax on that. Part of it. Yeah, no, no, no chill, but I, you know, I, I think it's important also to, you know, give it your best, right. That at the end of the day, that's all, that's all that, that we ask that's asked of us, I believe is like, just try your best, you know, give it your best and, and don't kill yourself doing it. Right. We're no good to anyone if we're sick or if we're, you know, worse, like out of here, like in the grave, you know what I mean? Like, we're miserable. Do that. Like, yeah, he left us a great book, but he's dead now. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's for future generations to, you know, we can't, can't work yourself to death. So that work, work life balance is, is real. And, and so I hear you, Mike, that's, that's challenging because there's also always one other place we could reach out to. There's always, you know, one other um, tour date or, or uh, venue that we could add on. But, you know, we, we also, we're doing this to, to promote more life, not more work. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like our work is, 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 you know, we, 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 we don't, you know, live to work or work to live, uh, whatever the term, the term is, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's about it's about life. It's about promoting life and and being in in flow and in fluidity with it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that brings me to asking you this question. So, how do you then balance entertainment and education in your graphic novel? Yeah. Oh man, it's it's definitely a um, a balancing act because you don't want to. Um, you know, put all this information, uh, especially unnecessary information, or, you know, this, this isn't a, a textbook, right? <laughs> it's not what I, I, we, I, I wanted to put out, you know, I wanted to put out some Afrofuturistic sci-fi fantasy, you know, with some superheroes, but not, you know, with capes, you know, it's a different type of superhero that draws its story from animals. And so, um, there's a, for me, it, it dealt with a lot of research. It dealt with a lot of, um, writing about what I knew about, which is young people, which is culture, um, hip hop culture specifically, but also the interaction between, uh, groups of people that I know a lot about Cape Verdean, West African people, specifically Cape Verdean people and Puerto Rican people and white folks. And, you know, I mean, um, and, and, and then also, you know, thinking about these these animals in a way that is informative, um, but also is, is it's almost like really um, lightly touching. So a lot of our characters have names of historical figures. So, you know, uh, Tume, his last name is Cabral, uh, off of our, our, 
revolutionary leader out of Cape Verde, Milka Cabral. And then you have, you know, like I said, Angel and, and Laris. But there's, you know, Douglas um, is in it, named after Frederick Douglas. And then there's, you know, Harriet, who's uh, the bald eagle, which is the symbol of, of America. But I wanted, you know, Harriet's name to be, you know, based, it's based off of Harriet Tubman and, you know, this, this need for freedom. But that's just planted there, right? And in the back, we do have uh, a glossary for the teachers, for the young people to know once again that there's um, there's layers to this, there's levels to this, there's um, an intention around it, and there's a spirit about it. Um, but never is it um, over. It sh it should you know I, I think of it like edutainment, right? It's 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 educational and entertainment, and it has to have a, a nice balance. And I think of you know people like KRS One and hip hop, who I thought did it great. And for those that don't know. Um, KRS One was like the Drake of our time, you know what I mean? And and knowledge is, you know, KRS stands for knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone, right? So so knowledge is at the key of this, and so at the end of the day, it has to be food for thought. That's the hip hop that I like to consume, even though like yeah, every once in a while, just give me some ignorant stuff. Or same thing with movies, just give me some, you know, action with some violence in it, just for the sake of it. But it's only so much I can consume of that before I'm like, ugh, okay, I'm I'm good with that. You know, it's like candy, right? Like, there's only so much candy you could eat. At some point, you got to get to the fruits, you got to get to the yams and the vegetables, and you know, if you eat meat, like the the meat, but you know, organic meat. You know, what I mean, like you you want to get to that. And so for hungry. me, it was, yeah, you're getting hungry. Right? <laughs> it's important to, it's to, to have that that balance. So it's a you know, it's it's a nice balanced meal, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So who did the graphics? Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, you did. Okay. So <laughs> with your graphics, how do you hope to engage and inspire readers with your message? Through well, that. Yeah, so um with this story particular because I work in a different different styles depending on what the project is. So there's a you know, I'm work finishing up a children's book for somebody, that's a totally different stylistic choice there you know depending on the audience so with something like Planeta Blue where you know it's in the medium of comics and we sort of um, project onto comics that they're cartoons and they're not you know there's fantasy and those kinds of things but because of the content of the story and sort of the seriousness of 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 these themes when I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, you know, we're going to have talking animals in this book, all right? So we have to be careful that that doesn't become like a distraction to what we're actually talking about here, because, you know, it's very easy to go into a very cute direction with that kind of stuff. So so uh, I sort of pitched this idea of like, well, why don't we, why don't I try making the animals sort of, you know, realistic? Like they, they you know, these are not cute uh character characterized stylistic looking animals so that you sort of let the viewer buy into this reality that we're creating okay so so you see you see a you know a great white shark you know and the viewer says well there's i can see by, by the way that that has been portrayed that there's a threat there that's a real <laughs> this is not like you know a, a finding nemo <laughs> shark you know this is like this is there's there's some some um, there's, teeth, there's teeth there <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, so sort of grounding it in, um, and I'm using the term realism very loosely, <laughs> because it's still very uh, stylized. It's still sort of, there's a lot of line work in there, which is something that I enjoy, but I feel like a lot of line work lends itself to uh, more uh, energy in the artwork. And it gives me some flexibility in how I can sort of manipulate environments so that maybe these characters are going through a space and it abstracts a little bit with the line work. And so that, you know, when they're underwater, that becomes very useful so that, you know, there's a, there's almost, I like to, when I can sort of sneak in some sort of surreal elements to, to my imagery, because right. I feel like what that does is it opens up the viewer into thinking, well, now I'm in a story where I don't know where this might take me visually. I'm not, I, you know, it's a little, it's not that it makes them uncomfortable, but it opens their minds up to that. Okay, so anything could kind of happen in this story, and and I, and that I kind of liken it to a grindhouse uh, horror movies, <laughs> which I know is a really weird thing, but it's like when you watch a movie like that, you're like, well, all bets are off. Anything's going to happen in this movie, right? You know, going into it that 
you might see and hear things that you were not expecting, you know? So it's sort of in that vein where it's like the, the style gives me the flexibility to really express the emotional, con you know, aspects of the book. Yeah. And I feel like it worked pretty well. And it, and it doesn't diminish how important the message is either. Yeah. You know? So, so um, I think that's what the original question was. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. got on like this train and I just kept going. Yeah. No, it was great, Mike. And I think, you know, what, what was great about your style, Mike, is is, is also the youth of, uh, use of the color palette, you know, because, you know, some of these themes are, are, are dark, right? We even talk about like the middle passage because they're underwater. And I, I know that that was something that was important to, to touch upon and, and for the young people to reflect upon. And uh, Mike just illustrated it in such a way and his use, use of color just makes it so you, you're not caught up in, in just this black and white um, reality, you know, because the world is in color. And so, you know, there's diverse colors and, 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 and you know, really profound colors. And, and it shifts throughout the story. You know, Mike really went through different moods depending on what was happening, the action or or the, um, you know, whether there was like a love sequence that was happening, you know, it felt right. Like it really brought you into that vibe, into that zone, um, which was, which is great for me. Also seeing my words come to life. So Mike just- yeah, well, really And also me. it's it's also inspired by the traditional comics of like the sixties where they had a limited color palette that they could use because of the printing techniques at those times. So what, what you get is these really um, sometimes contrasty, but very- powerful images where color is can be not used literally but to you really express uh moments in the story you know and i've always loved that because i you know i i've definitely seen work that like really works when it's realistically colored but you know it, for something like this i think it was appropriate to to open up the possibilities with both line color text and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. So both of you do both of you sing? Do you rap? Both of you? I so I rap, yeah. I'm a hip hop artist, yeah. And I'm a, I'm an MC. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I I will admit that I have rapped, but I will uh, never admit, but I have never, never performed or probably will ever perform. We gotta get in a cipher, Mike. I keep forgetting that you have the rapped and freestyled. And I had, there was another life. That was another life. <laughs> Okay, great. Can you rap for us then? Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> oh, him, him, him or me? Come on. I think I tend listen, to listen, listen, talk I got you, nothing to lose or speak my own truth or walk in my own shoes. I'm writing my own news. I got nothing to prove. I reap what I sow. I teach what I know beyond survival. Got everything to bring, breaking those chains, using my brain to sacrifice the pain. I got moves to make. Fake laws to break, no time to debate, new life to create, true and living. I'm building precision in God's likeness. I'm disciplined, a driven musician that's sipping nitrous. Hey, yo, I gotta like this righteous consciousness that burns bright as Kit Icarus. You a Greek myth? I'm a physicist, sick of this. Most of these rappers are cigarettes. They're corny, cancerous, and full of ish. I spent space shift into galactic alchemist, and now, bruh. <laughs> lick shot, lick shot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> Mike, we're, we're, we're waiting for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Put you on the spot, Mike. See, you want to you 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 say you rap. You a shit. <laughs> I wrote that. Yeah. Yes, you did. You did. So um, how do you incorporate your e-pop element into this graphic book? <laughs> yeah. Well, hip hop, you know, is is unapologetic. That's what I love about hip hop is the the fact that you know a lot of times we speak truth to power. And a main villain in this is an oil tycoon billionaire turned evil world conqueror. And so a lot of times when we out there talking to the public and we mention that you know that this person's you know a billionaire millionaire, um, you know from from a class where a lot of people like yeah we can see that you know there's some people out here in our in our reality that are, are um impacting our lives without us giving them 
the authority to, um, you know, we were talking about this the other day, uh, Mike, right? When we were talking about how, you know, people are putting up satellites above us, you know, and I'm just like, man, like, I didn't sign up. I, I didn't give you permission to, you know, put up satellite. I didn't give you permission to drill over there or frack over there or um, do these different environmental things that are going to impact me. And so um, hip hop always comes at it from, you know, the voice of the voiceless. Oftentimes it's, you know, for those that don't know, it, it started out in South Bronx, which at the time was one of the poorest and still right now, you know, arguably one of the poorest uh, communities, uh, boroughs, uh, cities, towns in the, in the world. Um, and so it came from what we say came from nothing, right? They have these young people, specifically DJ Cool Herc, who came from Jamaica, <laughs> you know, who saw something that was happening in Jamaica and it started creating it here. And, and then, you know, that inspired, that was like the spark to inspire, you know, Grand Wizard Theodore and Grandmaster Flash and, you know, and so many names, you know, um, you know, whether it's, 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 it's public enemy fight the power, you know, I feel like what's, what's great about this book is there is an element of, of telling the, the truth in a way that almost like, um, almost like comedy, right. It can be received, um, comics do that in a way where, and hip hop does that in a way where it's like, it almost softens a little bit of the blow because it's music, right? And Bob Marley said, you know, one good thing about music is when it hits, you feel no pain, right? And so um, ideally when people see the story, they know it's fantasy, but there is some of that element and similar to hip hop, here's this world that we created. It's, a, it's an exaggerated uh, situation. You know, I grew up, I grew up in the hood, right? I grew up in the projects of of of, of Massachusetts, right, uh, south of Boston. Um, at the same time, you know, even though there was drugs and violence outside my my home, in my home there was a lot of love, right? Mom was there, my father was there, my my family was there, guiding me to something better. Um, and so there's always this consciousness element that says, like, hey, even though the stuff is real, even though the stuff is hard, even though there's a lot of sacrifice being made. Um, we will get through this and we can do it in a way that there's joy, even in the way that we can celebrate it. And so I think hip hop, I already know hip hop is always straddling those two realities. It's like, hey, we're, we're here. We can change things and um, we can we can do it in a way that's very artistic and creative. Right. Great. Thank you for that. The okay. picture. The future of Planet Blue. What is it? What are your plans? Yeah. What do you think, Mike? Well, you know, we're hoping, to, you know, Tim's got a couple more books in him with this yes. story. So it's a series. Um, and, you know, we're we're ready to go on that. And, and that's an active uh, exercise that we're, we're doing. Uh, and, you know, our our ambitions with this project are do not have a limit. I mean, we can see this being translated into movies, TV, you know, whatever the best venue is to to really get the story to 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 the most people and to to represent it the right way. So um we, that's what we're thinking about. You know, in in Thames actually working on an audio version of the thing right now too which is in process too so um you know we're, you're only limited by your imagination i think and especially in this era where you see i mean i pay attention to a lot of these properties that start as just a book and now they're you did everybody's seeing it on a show you know and, and that's not an unreachable goal in this era which yeah. is which is great um and that's something that, you know, it's always sort of in front of us. And, and um, you know, we try to be realistic about the timeline for those things. But that's definitely something that the few, this, this, this story has a lot to give. And, I, and it has, um, you know, I, it, it's going to stay around. It's something that will resonate with people. It's not one of these books that you just put down and that's it and you move on. It's, I think it has a lot of heart to it. And it speaks to a lot of people. And and I think it's, 
you know, when you say you do an original graphic novel, there is something very original about this book. And when I first read it, and I said, I've never seen things like this in a story. And I'd love to be the one that creates it, draws it, you know? <laughs> so, um, so if it's going to be, if you're going to translate it into a movie in future, yeah, make sure yeah. you, make sure you answer me down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. we'll keep you we'll keep you on file <laughs> yeah no definitely i think that that's been uh part of the dream all along right is to have and create opportunities for people of color for black folks for the kids from our neighborhood right people who don't always get the opportunity i think it's so important you know for me like one of the things you know i, I tell my young my my sons i'm like hey we're, we're not doing this to become millionaires, billionaires. That's not the point of it, right? It's to tell the story that needed to be, to be told. And also when it becomes a, a movie, right? To give the young people of New Bedford, which is where it takes place, the, the first crack at this, right? To say, come on out. It's going to be an open call for the youth of New Bedford and, uh, you know, others. But to come out and to give it your best shot. You know, we're going to hire whoever's the best person if if it ends up being Zendaya who's you know doing the lead cut that would be great you know but it could also be you know Jaylee you know what I mean who's who's the young woman who yeah. you know is just has has this dream of being an actor and we're like yeah let's 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 go because you are the, you are the best one for the job but I, I think it's always important for accessibility and I think oftentimes people don't fight for that you know I think people get to a place where they're just happy to be like, oh, it's going to be a movie, right? I, that's what's always at the forefront for me is like, no, that this is important, that there is an open call for the youth of New Bedford, first and foremost. And then we can we can go everywhere with it, you know, <laughs> and include everyone else. But first and foremost, give the, give the talented youth of New Bedford an opportunity for this, because that's when... I, I believe, you know, our dream becomes other people's dreams and that dream grows and it becomes, you know, a world that is a dream and not a nightmare, which, you know, right now it's it's very hard to escape the nightmare of the world unless you, you know, are actively working um, the, the opposite side of that and not necessarily just attacking the nightmare, but actually building a, a dream that more people can say like, mm, I'm not interested in in war, I rather work towards peace. Yeah, I know you want you guys want to push hate because that makes you a lot of money, but I rather actually work on love. You know what I mean? And compassion and empathy. That that seems to actually be what motivates me, and mo we know it motivates most people. But um, some people have been able to really capitalize on suffering and and distress. And for us, no, we we want to show that another world is possible, another future is possible, and and we know that. Fiction is part of that. That's how we imagine that. We know that comics have always inspired, it has inspired me, has inspired Mike and, and millions, billions of people throughout history to see the story, even though we know like it's fiction, but there's something that's real about this fictional story that inspires us to be like, yes, I could be super heroic and superhuman and extraordinary with it. Interesting stuff. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it's good to actually create opportunities for people within a local community so and around the world and 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 I, I, I guess that's what you guys are trying to do with with this um novel with this graphic story which is really cool thank yeah. you on our show any inspirational advice for our viewers our listeners out there yeah I, I'll I'll always say just just commit to it. You know, um, oftentimes you can be indecisive. You can always change your mind, but just just, just kind of picture that future that you want, commit to it, make that choice, and just work towards it. You know, it's it's hard work, but if you're working towards something that you know at the end is going is going to be good for yourself, your family, your loved ones, the environment, the world, then just commit to it and just go all out, man. We need more dreamers. We need more people building this and dreaming really big because um, if not, I don't know how else we're going to make it. So thank you for all the creatives out there um, and whoever's listening to this to just do do a little bit more, go a little harder um, and commit to it and know that like you can, you can do it. I, I believe it. I know it. We're, we're, we're an example of it. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, I'll just add, um, I'm, I'm always reluctant to give advice to anybody because, you know, everybody's circumstance is different. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing I do feel comfortable saying is to, I always encourage people to attempt to live a life with radical honesty with yourself and with other people. And that can be applied to what we're doing right now is being honest with yourself and being patient with the process and knowing that you're giving everything you can, or if you're not giving all you can, but I think if you can, if you can center yourself with that concept, um, it will bring good things to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on our show today. We really appreciate you guys. If anyone wants to contact you, how can they? Yeah, they so, Tim. yeah <laughs> planetablue.com. <laughs> planetablue.com. So it's planet with an A and then blue, B-L-U, without the E, right? So planetablue.com. You can reach out to us. We're also on social media and we're... You know, we're active on there and also approachable on there. We will be, we will respond. So if you looking for any little advice, because we know like, you know, it, it takes, it takes a village. It takes a community. And so that's how you can reach us and, and pick up the book, Planeta Blue, Rise of our Guru, November 21st. Um, you know, if we're successful, is if, if, if people, um, you know, can, can uh, attain it and grab it. So grab it. Put it in your hands and enjoy it, even if it's a gift for someone else. We, we'd love for you all to be part of this journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And all that information will be in the description and in the show notes anyway. So, guys, hey, let's go out there and buy this book. I'm sure it's going to bless us. <laughs> yes. yes, it will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank well, you. Good night or goodbye from myself, Mike. Him. Okay then. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us today on Mission to Inspire. Subscribe if you have not already done so. Like, comment, leave a message. Let's stay connected. Let's jointly inspire the world.